Hey everyone, so today I'm going to finally be talking about my favourite books of 2020 and I know this video is a bit late, usually I would post it, you know, beginning of January but I've been going through a tough time at the moment so, you know, uploads have been slower and stuff but you know, it's here. <laughs> so basically these are the top 13 books. I tried to make a 10 but I just couldn't. The top 13 books that I read in 2020 so they didn't necessarily come out in 2020 but I read them in 2020 so yeah these are my top favourite books that I read that I obviously recommend if they sound interesting to you so super excited to talk about them but before we get into the books this video is kindly being sponsored by Ana Luisa Jewelry which I am so excited about because if you've been watching my videos you know I absolutely love them and they're currently having a Valentine's Day sale so they have 15% off everything on the website which is amazing and gifting some Ana Luisa Jewelry would be a perfect gift for yourself or for your loved ones I absolutely adore their pieces they have so many stunning items to choose from they're their pieces are also such high quality, they're gonna last you a long time. All of their jewellery is crafted with care using the best noble metals. And they also have a 365 day warranty period, so if one of the pieces doesn't meet your expectations, you can get a refund or a replacement. They have really fair pricing, so their prices range from $39 up to higher end prices for their higher end pieces, obviously. So there's really something for everybody. Another reason why I love promoting Ana Luisa is they have an amazing sustainability um, mission in place. They offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. They also do limited batches to ensure highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. So all of that just makes me so happy. But anyway, of course, I wanted to show you the new pieces that I got. So the first is this double layered necklace. So this is the Temple Black necklace set. So there's two necklaces, there's the shorter chain and the longer chain with the black piece on it as well. And I absolutely love the look of layered necklaces. So I love how this is already laid, you know, but if you did want to just wear one of the pieces by itself, you can do that too. And I also have another necklace layered. So I have this one, which is a butterfly one. And this is the Suryaz. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, this is a really stunning butterfly necklace. So Super, super dainty, so cute. Once again, super good for layering. Then I also got two pairs of earrings. So the first are these, which are the Elise earrings. Once again, of course, I love these. I just love huggies and, you know, I love like the little teardrop design. It's so cute and just so like dainty and I just love it. And then I got another pair of huggies and these are the Oshi earrings. Once again, these are quite delicate and I just love the way that these two look together. And I love the gold star. I just love this whole jewellery look at the moment. So yes, I love all my pieces, love Ana Luisa. So if you're looking to treat yourself or treat one of your loved ones this Valentine's Day or just any day really, make sure you check the link in my description to take advantage of their Valentine's Day sale where they're having 15% off everything. Like that is so good. <laughs> so thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. And now of course, let's get into all the books. So I decided not to rank them because it was stressing me out too much. Like I don't know like what my top book of the year is. I don't know like any of the ranks really so I just decided to not put that pressure on myself and you know these are all just amazing so I'm here to talk about them <laughs> but two of these books I'm not going to go into much detail because I actually recently talked about them in my previous video if you didn't see I uploaded my video recommending my favorite audiobooks so I'll leave that linked above and below but in that video I talked about The Henna Wars and this is an amazing book that I read in 2020 and I listened to the audiobook so that's why it's obviously in that video and yeah this book is just incredible it's basically a about Nishat who is Muslim and she's a lesbian and she comes out to her parents and her parents basically say like you shouldn't be a lesbian if you're Muslim. So she has to struggle with not being fully accepted for who she is. And then she meets this other girl who used to be her childhood friend and they reconnect, but then they also become rivals because they open competing henna businesses. So this book just tackles so many important themes like cultural appropriation, sexuality, there's romance, like it's just so good. I absolutely loved it. So definitely one of my favorite books of 2020. And then the other book that I talked about in that video is The Black Flamingo by Dean Utter. I finally have a physical copy because my friend Kevin gifted it to me for my birthday. So love you, Kevin. Once again, this was one of my favorites of the year. It was just so good. And obviously you listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is narrated by Dean Utter. So good. And basically this is about a black gay teen who is just navigating life navigating his sexuality, navigating his identity. And it's written in verse. It's just so beautiful and there's so much to be learned from it. It's just one of the most beautiful books I've ever read, honestly. So of course, this is one of my top 
favorite books of 2020 as well. Also, I forgot to say that I'm also going to be including manga in this list. I was thinking of doing separate videos, but I just decided to combine it. So I'll talk about manga in the second half of the video. Anyway, so the next book, Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Tali Hibbert. This is just such an amazing book. I knew as soon as I read it that it would be one of my favorites of the year because it's just so good and it's pure happiness. Actually, no, it's not pure happiness. It does have some, you know, tougher themes like anxiety and stuff that it explores, but it's just so good. So basically, if you don't know, this is the companion book to the Brown Sisters, well, it's part of a trilogy. So the first book is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which was on my favorites list in 2019. And so this is the second book in the trilogy following Chloe's sister, who is obviously Danny Brown. And this is adult romance. And basically this book follows Danny, obviously, and Zafir. Zafir is a security guard. And one day at Danny's workplace, there's a fire drill gone wrong and Zafir rescues Danny from it and people take photos of the event and start shipping them online and then they realize that they can fake date to capitalize off this you know buzz around them they fake date so it has that amazing element I just love fake dating and it's just so so fun. Danny is such an amazing character, Zafir is such an amazing character. I loved both of them separately and obviously both of them together and there's just so many good moments. It's so easy to read. I loved the exploration of anxiety especially because Zafir is the one who is dealing with anxiety and men's mental health is usually more taboo. So I just really appreciated this book for everything that it is. It's amazing. 100% recommend if you're into adult romance. So good. Okay, the next book is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is the hardest book I've ever read. Like it was so hard for me to read, but it's definitely one of the most powerful books I've ever read. So basically this book follows Vanessa and it's told in two timelines. So it's told when Vanessa is 15 and then it's told in a separate timeline, I think 17 years later. And when Vanessa is 15, she's getting groomed by her teacher. So it's really hard to read because of that, obviously. So, you know, a lot of trigger warnings for rape, pedophilia, so many different things. But yeah, so that's what she's going through when she's 15. And when she's 15, she thinks it's love. She thinks this is the best thing ever. Um, but when she's older, she starts to realize the things that were actually happening to her and how she was actually getting groomed and you know how wrong everything was so it's just really really hard to read but it's obviously a really important story and I just thought the way that it was done was so amazing and you can tell there was a lot of care and emotion put into this book so I just think this book is incredible and obviously like I said it's super hard to read so if you're not in the right headspace I definitely don't recommend it because you need to be in the right headspace to read it you know I nearly had a panic attack reading this book like it's a lot but if you can read it like I said highly recommend it okay the next book is Starfish of course <laughs> I read this in my first vlog where I read like a random book off my bookshelf which by the way I do want to continue doing that I just you know have to do that <laughs> but anyway yeah if you saw that vlog you obviously know of course this had to be on this list this book touched me in so many different ways and I absolutely adore it like it's so good and it's one of the few books that made me cry and it just really meant a lot especially in that moment that I read it anyway so basically <laughs> this is why contemporary and this book follows Kiko and Kiko is biracial being white and Japanese so I really related to you know the biracial aspect and Kiko is struggling with quite a few things she has anxiety she doesn't have the best relationship with her mother she experienced some trauma with her uncle I believe and she's also just trying to discover who she is and who she wants to be and stuff like that and I just love the themes that this book explored I loved Kiko as a character I loved the way that the story was told because Kiko loves art so at the end of a lot of the chapters there would be a description of what Kiko paints and it's a reflection of like what she's going through or her mood or something so for example I painted a woman who steals hearts but none of them fit the hole inside her empty black chest and I just thought that was so stunning like I loved that aspect of the book and just everything about this book I just connected to it on such a deep personal level and it will always mean so much to me and it's just so nice to see yourself represented in a book okay then of course Bunny by Mona Awad is on this list because this book is everything I absolutely love this book I bunny read it with my friends Caitlin and Jamie and I just had the best time it's basically like a horror comedy I would say I think it's classified just as horror but it's a horror comedy vibe to me and it's just so weird so it definitely won't be for everyone 
but it was definitely for me like it was so fun definitely one of the most fun I've had reading a book and I just love like weird books this obviously is really weird because it's not really clear like what's going on what's real and even in the end just still confused basically this book is set at a university it follows Samantha and Samantha hates these girls called the bunnies and they're basically like this cult anyway she gets invited to one of their events one day and she decides to go and then she gets sucked into their world and I feel like that's all I should say like it's so weird you can't even really explain it but if you're gonna read it you just need to know that <laughs> but yeah like I said I loved this book for everything that it was I love when books can be interpreted in so many different ways and this is definitely one of these books because you know everyone has their own different theory at the end and when I was watching reviews after I finished this book it was so fascinating to see everyone's different you know perspective on the book and everyone's different theories so it's just one of my favorite things like I loved this book so much you know if what I said sounds like it interests you I would definitely say give it a chance because it was just such a fun time to me like <laughs> there were so many moments where I was laughing there were so many shocking moments like just so good like definitely such a highlight of my year so love it <laughs> okay now I need to talk about The Beautiful by Renee Ardier this book is so good I feel like I always have to say like I feel like I always have to defend this book because I remember when this book first came out and there were so many mixed reviews some people were saying like it was so bad some people loved it obviously but a lot of people were saying it wasn't good and I have to say that I obviously loved it <laughs> I gave it five stars it's obviously on this list and this book was heavily marketed as like the return of the vampires which was a disservice to this book because this book isn't too vampire heavy like there are vampires in it but that's not really the main focus of this first book so if you go in with that expectation I'm sure you'll be disappointed so I know that's probably why a lot of people didn't like the book but if you just go in knowing that it's going to be a gothic paranormal fantasy romance vibe you're probably gonna have a good time because I did <laughs> this book is just so perfect for me like I love the vibes I love the setting it's set in the 1800s in New Orleans and the opening sentence is New Orleans is a city ruled by the dead which I love so yeah there are different paranormal creatures in this book but this first book doesn't have like too many we get more into that in the second book but yeah this book also has like a murder mystery element because there's all these random murders happening and people obviously want to know who's doing this and it's also really interesting because we get chapter from the killer like the killer's perspective and we obviously don't know who the killer is so you try to like work it out yourself as well it was just so fun like this was so fun and also I absolutely adore the romance and I do love romance and I feel like some people think I don't love romance because a lot of the time I complain about the romance in books but that's just because I'm picky with it like a lot of romance I'm just like okay this is boring where's the chemistry you know but I absolutely adore the romance in this book like I love them probably one of my favorite ships because I just really feel their chemistry I love the two characters and it's just so fun so yeah I just love this and it's definitely more like slower paced but if you enter the vibes like you're just gonna be there for it you know okay so my final section is manga. So the first is Full Metal Alchemist Volume 2. I read a few volumes in 2020 so you know I just chose Volume 2. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know which one is like the top one but Full Metal Alchemist is amazing. It obviously involves alchemy and it's about the two Elric brothers who delve into the taboo of alchemy by trying to bring back their dead mother to life which you're not supposed to do so there's obviously consequences and they lose their bodies in the process <laughs> well Ed doesn't lose his whole body but he loses parts of his body anyway so they're trying to get their bodies back and you know obviously they're on this journey and it's just so good like this series I'm sure if you're into manga slash anime like you already know this series because it's amazing obviously but I can't wait to finish it it is truly one of the best series out there the themes the plot, the characters, it's all just so well done. Then of course I have to talk about Tokyo Ghoul. Now I did film my 24 hour readathon where I read like the whole Tokyo Ghoul series, which I still need to edit. So that will be coming, but I just chose volume one. Once again, I don't know if this is my top favorite volume, but here it is. This just represents the whole series. <laughs> Basically this is a horror manga series, but definitely not too scary, but it follows ghouls who live amongst humans and ghouls need to eat human flesh to survive. And our main character Kenkaneki is the first like half ghoul. Joke's not first but they're rare so obviously he has to adjust to becoming this new half ghoul and that's what the series is about and it's so good and I love the characters I love the plot just everything about it and Ken Kaneki is also a bookworm which is just a nice bonus I absolutely adore his character and seeing his character progression throughout the series so yeah love Tokyo Ghoul okay the final section is my Junji Ito section so I have three Junji Ito books if you don't know Junji Ito writes horror manga and I absolutely love Junji Ito so the first is No Longer Human by Junji Ito obviously and this follows 
follows Yozo Oba, who is so used to putting on like a clown facade. So he's used to being like the class clown, making everyone laugh, but on the inside he is struggling with a lot and he's not happy. And this book follows him from when he's young to when he's an adult and you know it deals with a lot of hard themes. Like definitely can be super hard to read, lots of trigger warnings, so please look that up if you want to read it. But I just thought it was so well done and also this is actually a manga adaptation of the book No Longer Human so I definitely want to read that because I think that's like a classic in Japan so yeah definitely need to read that. So yeah this is Junji Ito's manga adaptation of it and of course the art was amazing you know just the story was so good I loved I just love stories where you get to see someone like grow up and see how experiences shape them and stuff so yeah I just thought this was incredible. Okay then of course I have Tommy by Junji Ito. I don't know like what my favourite Junji Ito book is, but I think it's between this and the other book that I'll talk about. Anyway, so this is so good. It's basically about Tommy, who can seduce nearly any man and drive them to murder. And no matter how many times she's killed, the world will never be free of her. I just loved it. I don't know how to fully describe why I loved it, but I think it also does explore some, you know, good themes about, you know, society's obsession with, you know, being pretty and stuff. And obviously I just loved the story, you know, pretty horrific at times. Loved it. <laughs> okay, and finally I have Uzumaki by Junji Ito. This is definitely the scariest book I've ever read. It's terrifying. There are some really horrific scenes in this and it was really hard for me to read at first because it made me realize that I do have a fear of spirals. Like I just don't like like patterned things. And this book basically follows a town that is cursed with these mysterious spirals that keep showing up everywhere and driving people to do weird things. So it's a very like weird and kind of vague concept but it's terrifying. And yeah like at the beginning I was like I don't know if I can read this <laughs> but I pushed through and tried to get over my fear and I still haven't gotten over it <laughs> but it was worth it because I loved the story and like I said it was just terrific <laughs> but so so good. And once again I can't fully explain why I loved it so much but I just did. I honestly just don't know how Junjito comes up with this stuff but I'm thankful for his weird mind. <laughs> anyway so those are my top books that I read in 2020. I would love to know you know if you've read any of these or what your like top book of the year was if you can choose just one or just let me know a few. I would love to know. I've been loving watching everyone else's favorite books of the year videos because you know this is just such a good time for booktube to get the best recommendations. So if you're looking for more content from me I have a Patreon which is always linked below and that is where I upload extra reading vlogs, live shows and just extra content but I actually am taking the month of February off so I'm not uploading anything new there this month because I'm working on my mental health at the moment but if you do sign up you get access to my previous content on there. Don't forget I have my other channels Journal with Chloe and ASMR with Chloe and I have my Instagram and Twitter which is at Books with Chloe even though I'm taking like a Twitter break at the moment. <laughs> Thank you so much once again to Anna Louisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the link in my description to take advantage of their 15% off everything sale that they're having. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a good day and night and I'll see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.